Hi everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our Science Discoveries episode for today, we will be learning projectile motion. So let's get started. motion. What is projectile? Projectile is any object which projected by some means and continues to move due to its own inertia or mass. In projectile, there are two components that would be considered. Projectiles move in two dimensions. Since a projectile moves in two dimensions, it is therefore having two components. So you will have your vertical and horizontal component. Now, if you throw a ball, let's say this is your ball, thrown it, you will have your vertical component. Let's say our vertical component is the red one. So upward, 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 downward, downward. And of course, your horizontal component. So your horizontal component would be in one direction. Now let's start with our vertical components. Changes due to gravity does not cover equal displacements in equal time periods. So both the magnitude and direction change for vertical components. As the projectile moves up, the magnitude decreases and its direction is upward. As it moves down, the magnitude increases and the direction is downward. So for your vertically launched projectile, in this part here, your vertical velocity decreases on the way upward. On a point where it reaches its maximum, there will be no vertical velocity at the top of the trajectory. As it goes down here, your vertical velocity increases on the way downward. In vertically launched projectiles, since the projectile was launched at an angle, let's say for example, from this horizontal component here, you will have an angle. Therefore, you will have your initial velocity, x, which is your horizontal, will have vo cos x, and your vertical initial, voy, will be VO sine angle. There are several things you must consider when doing these types of projectiles besides using components. If it begins and ends at ground level, the Y displacement will be equal to zero. So if you have your vertically launched projectile, you will still use the kinematics like for example, for your distance, so for your vertical distance, you will have, let me just erase this one. So for your vertical component, you would have your initial velocity, which is VO sine angle. And for your velocity, vertical velocity, you will use the formula VY equals VOY minus or plus GT. Now remember that as it goes down, G becomes negative. And our distance for Y would be VOY times time plus one half GT squared. Where our G here is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. For our horizontal component, to analyze projectile in two dimensions, we need two equations. So one for your horizontal direction and the other one will be for your vertical direction. So if you have, let's draw that projectile again. As mentioned a while ago, you have your vertical components and you will have your horizontal components. So your horizontal components never changes. It covers equal displacement in equal time periods. 
So this means the horizontal, the initial horizontal velocity would equal to your final horizontal velocity. In other words, the horizontal velocity is constant. Why is it constant? That is because gravity does not work horizontally. So to analyze a projectile for your horizontal velocity, you will have to use your VOX, which is your X component. That will be VO cosine angle. And then you will have your horizontal distance your distance would be x equals vox times time, where vox is your initial velocity of your x component and t is your time of flight. And since you have your, your velocity is the same across, so therefore it will remain constant all throughout your velocity. So the ball's horizontal velocity remains constant while it falls because gravity does not exert any horizontal force. So your acceleration here would also be zero. That means that the ball will keep moving towards your right, let's say for example, at a velocity of five meters per second. Now in terms of angle, Projectiles launched at an angle. A ball launched, let's say you have your two components here, VOY and your VOX. So if a ball is launched at a steep angle, let's say our ball is here, it will have a larger vertical velocity. So let's say, for example, this is projected at 80 degrees, it will have a larger vertical velocity component, but it will have a small horizontal component. And if a ball is launched at a low angle, let's say for example, this is launched at, sorry, let's say for example, this is launched at 45 degrees. And your ball will be there. It will have an angle with a larger horizontal velocity component and a small vertical component. So since this is a complementary angle, any range or projectile angle at, a dis at an angle of 80 degrees, it will have the same distance traveled horizontally if this ball was projected at 10 degrees because 80 plus 10 will be your com complementary angle which equals to 90. So any ball projected let's say for example at 60 degrees let's say that is 60 degrees then it will be the same distance if this was projected at 30 degrees. The vertical velocity is responsible for giving the projectile its hang time. So when we say hang time, this is the highest or the height you will reach or the maximum distance that you will reach. So let's try a few examples. A place kicker kicks a football with a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees. How long is the ball? in the air so that's time how far that is distance and how high does it travel that is also distance for your vertical velocity for your vertical distance so here your first step is to find the different components so you will have v o x which is v o and your cosine x cosine angle so vo is 20 cosine 53 that will give us 12.04 and your voy which is vo sine angle that will be 20 sine 53 that will give us 
15.97 meters per second. So the first question would be how long is the ball in the air? So since it is on the air, that means that we will be using our vertical components formula. So you will have your, for letter A, you will have your Y equals VOYT plus one half GT squared. So you will have 15 point zero, 90, sorry, 97, that's VOY here, times T, because you're looking for time. And since this is going upward, that means our gravity will be negative. So negative half of 9.8 will be 4.9 T squared. Rearranging the formula, Y will be zero here. Rearranging the formula would be 15.97 equals 4.9 T. Therefore, time would be 3.26 seconds. Let's try letter B. So for letter B, you will have the question, how far away does it land? Now remember that our time for letter A being solved is 3.26 seconds. So how far for letter B would be X, because that's horizontal component, You'll have VOXT minus, oh sorry, there will be no minus since it's a vertical component. So you'll have VOX which is 12.04 times 3.26, that will be 39.24 meters. Therefore, how far away does it land? It will land at a distance of 39.24 meters. Now the last question, how high does it travel? And that would be your vertical component. So since it's a vertical component, you will use Y equals VOYT plus one half GT squared. So VOY is 15.97, time is 1.63. Now, why is it 1.63? That is because it is how high? That means it's the maximum, the maximum height that it has traveled. That means it has halfway. It has gone up, but has not gone down. So it's here. So that's 1.63 minus 4.9 because it's going up times 1.63 squared. So that means that our distance is 13.01. I hope that you have learned something today and if you do please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell for your attendance today and as always as teacher maria would say please do live your life to the fullest learn something new every day and love one another as how our god loves us see you next episode for our science discoveries bye